Hello everyone, my name is Dale and today on Inception Gaming I'm going to show you guys how you can make 60 iron plates per minute in Satisfactory at the very start of the game. If you do find this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind afterwards. Other than that guys, let's get to it. So before we start making this factory guys, let's take a look at the rates of power and resources that we're going to be needing and using, and then of course the buildings that we're going to need to construct this factory. So starting with the ore, we're going to need 90 iron ore per minute to make this factory, and there are three good ways to do this. Now the first one is going to be using three impure iron nodes. This is going to use 15 megawatts because you're going to be uh, needing three Mark 1 miners to do this method. The second method is of course to use one normal node of iron and one impure node of iron. This is only going to use 10 megawatts of power to get your 90 uh, and that's going to be using two Mark 1 miners instead of the previous three. And the best way to do this is of course to use two normal nodes. Uh, the only downside to this is that you are going to need to access the overclocking ability in the MAM which is under the power slug section uh, but this will only use 7 megawatts of power and only 1.5 Mark 1 miners and the way that that works is you've got one miner set to 100% clock speed on the normal node and then you've got one miner set to 50% clock speed on the other normal node and that will generate yourself 90 iron ore per minute. So once you've got your ore sorted guys you're obviously going to be looking at your smelters and your constructors. For this factory you're going to need three smelters and three constructors each is going to be using 12 megawatts respectively and uh, the smelters are obviously going to produce your 90 iron ingots per minute and then your constructors are going to take that 90 iron ingots per minute and process them into 60 iron plates per minute which is exactly what we're after today. Now you can make this more power efficient if you have gone down the overclocking route. Uh, the way to do that guys is simply the more buildings you add into your factory uh, means that you're going to save more power in the long run if you're only producing the same amount of end result resources. So for example, if you were to take your three smelters and up them to six smelters and run all six of those at 50%, which is the exact same as three at 100%, you're actually going to be using 9.6 megawatts instead of your 12 megawatts. So you're going to save small amounts of resource, uh, sorry, small amounts of power, but at the start of the game, guys, if you've got the space and the resources to make the extra machines, I would 100% recommend doing it. If you don't want to be chasing your tail, getting biofuel all the time. So taking a look at exactly what power is produced with what route, uh, if you were to go down the three impure node method, which is down there, uh, the whole factory is going to take 39 megawatts, and that is just with three constructors and three smelters, guys. Obviously, they drop if you up the buildings. Uh, the middle method is going to use 34 megawatts, and you'll probably find that that's going to be the best one until you can get the overclocking capability through the MAM. If you do go through the overclocking capability, you're only going to be using 31 megawatts to produce your 60 iron plates per minute. And of course, 30 megawatts is what a biofuel generator can produce. Uh, so if you were to go ahead and up your smelters and up your constructors by double, you can in fact get this factory operating below that 30 megawatt mark, which is excellent because the entire thing can be generated or powered rather through one biofuel generator. So, other than those requirements there, guys, let's take a look at the buildings we're going to need. So starting off, we've got our two conveyor mergers, three smelters, three constructors. We've got six Mark I power poles, one storage container, which is obviously going to be wherever you place your iron plates after they've been made, uh, one conveyor splitter, 20 foundations of any kind. Uh, they don't have to be the four meter, they can be the two meter or the one meter, but it's entirely up to you. And of course, then you've got your two Mark I miners. The only way that that will change is if you go through the uh, the less effective method where of course you're going to up that to three. And then of course guys just for good measure we need some extra cable for connecting all of the electrics together and of course any extra iron plates for your conveyor belts and conveyor poles. So getting into building this factory then guys go ahead and find yourself a nice space uh, relatively close to iron will make this a lot easier and less resource intensive on the iron plates or the conveyors. Uh, but go ahead and mark out a 5x4 area with your foundations, just like so. Once you've done that then, guys, go ahead and grab your smelters. You're going to need three of these. Starting over on this square over here. Make it central to the uh, foundation piece if you want to. It's not massively important as long as you don't go too far back. If you make it nice and centre, you're going to place these three smelters on those three foundation blocks like so. And it should look something like this. 
Once you've done that then guys, go ahead and grab your constructors, line it up with the fourth row of foundations and make sure the constructor is uh, lined up at the back of the constructor with the uh, foundation there. One there, one there and one there, just like so. Now that you've placed that in guys, we'll get our storage container. So I'm just going to use a standard storage container for now because we don't have access uh, in the early game to the other storage container. Uh, make sure that the red box is at the top of the container as you're placing it like so. So the, uh, the red box is facing your constructors as opposed to your smelters. And then as long as you place it within these four foundation pieces here, any of them four, it's absolutely fine. Just don't go placing it on that top corner there because it will get in the way of other things in the future. So I'm just going to place mine next to my smelters. Once we've done that, guys, we'll get the mergers and the conveyors, sorry, the mergers and the splitters in. So starting with the mergers, just make sure that that blue arrow is on the right hand side of the merger like so. Come up to this foundation piece here, making sure that the arrow is pointing to the right, directly in front of your constructor. Place one there and place one here. Grabbing your splitter now then guys, coming down to this very first box over here, making sure that the red arrows this time are at the bottom facing your player, and then you've got it lined up with the smelter directly in front of it. Place it in the centre of that foundation. At this point guys, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. From here then guys, we'll go ahead and do the logistics. So let's go ahead and hook up this splitter to this first smelter directly like so. Coming in nice and close for this one, we're going to go from the right side of the splitter to the centre of the foundation, don't place it yet. Go back two to the left, place it there so that it looks like that. And then go ahead and connect to that conveyor and hook that up to your smelter like so. And it'll give you a nice 90 degree curve like that. From here then guys, go over to your smelters. Hook up the smelter directly to each constructor that is in front of it. Just like so. The more complicated part of this, guys, is this one here. So from this first constructor on the left, go ahead and connect to it, come to the center of the foundation, but then go back by two squares. Your conveyor belt should go yellow. That is fine. Go ahead and just place it there like so. Connect to that conveyor and then hook that straight up to the merger and you'll give yourself a nice, smart 90 degree bend like so. From there, go ahead and connect the constructor to the merger directly in front of it, just like so and then connect the left merger to the right merger so that it's running into the back of it like so. From here then guys, go ahead and grab your conveyor belt, connect it to the merger, come to the center of this top right foundation piece, go two points to the left and place it there, and then connect to that conveyor belt, come to the center, run it straight down and into your storage like so. Now at this point you should have something that looks a little bit like this. At this point, it's probably going to be a good idea to sort out of the recipes in each building. So go into your smelters and select iron ingots. Each one is going to be running at 100%. If you're placing double, obviously just make sure to set them to whatever speed you're needing. And then in the constructors, we're making iron plates. Again, all of them are running at 100% like so. At this point, guys, it wouldn't be a bad idea to place our miners in. So go ahead and find your nodes and hook them up to wherever is going to make sense. So for me, I know that I've got one iron ore running into this smelter. So I'm going to uh, send this one towards it like that. And then I've got another set of iron ore running into that splitter. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up a little bit like so. So now I've got something that looks a little bit like this. At this point, we may as well do the logistics for those. So grab your conveyor belts one last time. Come down to this first constructor. Hook that up. Nice and tidy, however you seem fit. As long as it's going into the back of this splitter, guys, it's absolutely fine. But just make sure that this conveyor belt is bringing in 60 iron ore. It has to do that for this system to work correctly. After that, since we're doing the most effective method, we're just going to run this one straight into the back of this smelter. Just like so. And we do just need to, at this point, make sure that this miner is set to running at 50% clock speed so that it doesn't overproduce iron ore and waste energy. So at this point, your factory should look something like this. From here then, guys, we'll go ahead and do the power. So grab your power poles. Come over to this uh, top right constructor to start off with. Uh, the cross section in your foundations, go ahead and put your power pole one back and one to the right of that. It should be blue when you do it. 
Same for the other two constructors. So find the cross section in your foundation pieces. Come down and go to the right by one. And the same for this last one as well. When it comes to the smelters, guys, you can apply the same thing. Or as long as it's got it somewhere next to it on this left-hand side here, it'll be absolutely fine. I prefer to do it in the exact same place I've got the constructor ones. So I find the cross section, I go down, I go right, and I place it just there. It keeps your power poles nice and neat and tidy as well. At this point, we may as well hook up all of the power poles together. So it should create a C shape when you do this. Just like so. From here, we can go ahead and connect our constructors to the respective uh, power pole that's next to it. Like so. And the same thing for these smelters as well. Now, at this point, guys, it's going to be a good idea to hook up your uh, main ring here for the inner side of the factory to your power, depending on wherever you've got that. And a good way to check that all of these are ready to go is all of these lights should be yellow. If any of them are red, it either means that you've not selected the recipe. So, for example, if I uh, delete this smelter and then go ahead and place this in again, like so, you'll notice that the light on this is now going to be red because it either isn't hooked up to power well, I've now done that, but I've actually not set the recipe. Now I've set the recipe, the light has gone yellow. So if you've, if you've got yellow lights, you're in the good. Uh, if you've got red lights, uh, you do need to sort something out. From here then, guys, the only thing left to do is to obviously hook up the power to your miners. Uh, and a nice easy way in this particular setup is to just come to this last power pole in the circuit, connect that to your first miner, and then your second miner just directly like so. Now at this point, all of the iron ore should start pouring into your factory like so. You should have 60 coming in on that bottom left line and 30 coming in on the bottom right line. Obviously, if you've gone ahead and used the uh, lesser method, you're going to have uh, 160 line and 130 line from a normal and an impure node. If you've gone for the lesser method again, you're going to have three lines and all you need to do for that is just hook each miner up to each smelter directly and you should have the same thing happen in your factory. It should still produce the same amount of iron plates Per minute. Now the easiest way to know if you've got any problems in your iron plate factory guys is that this belt that's going into your storage should have no gaps on it whatsoever once everything is up and running correctly. If you do have any gaps it's obviously not producing 60 iron plates per minute because the conveyor mark 1 can only carry 60 items per minute so gaps mean it is not producing that amount of items. If your belt is looking a little bit like this one here then your factory is working at 100% efficiency and the best way to check that is to go over to the nearest power pole. And if your orange line doesn't waver, then you know that your factory is working absolutely perfectly. And there we have it, guys. That is how you can produce 60 iron plates per minute on Satisfactory at the very start of the game with as little power as possible. Now, if, of course, you double up on the smelters and the constructors, you can go ahead and save extra power and only use one biofuel generator, which means that you can go ahead and grab yourself a stack of solid biofuel Pop in your generator and then you can just let the factory run until it dries up and you know that you've got enough iron plates to last you for quite a while. So of course guys if you did find this guide helpful go ahead and drop a like down below, comment if you've got any questions, I'll be more than happy to help you out and answer any questions that you've got and of course if you do want to subscribe go ahead and do that as well, it's free and you can always change your mind as well. So guys I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye.